One thing that sets Tesla apart from all its competitors is its supercharging network. I know Tesla has recently allowed non-Teslas to charge at their superchargers, but it's been a super slow rollout. I also know, if you haven't heard the news, that Ford has partnered with Tesla, and now they're actually changing their charging adapter to be the same as Tesla's. So soon, all Fords will also be able to charge at Tesla superchargers, which is a game changer. The biggest reason why we got another Tesla instead of another electric car like a BMW iX is that the Tesla supercharging just can't be beat. You literally just grab it, plug it in, and you're done. There's also superchargers literally everywhere. It gives you up-to-date information if one is busy, so you can go to another one, and it helps eliminate the dreaded range anxiety when you're on a road trip. However, we're in 2023. Is third-party charging like EVgo and Electrify America and even ChargePoint still really bad compared to a Tesla supercharger? Well, stick around to find out. What is up, guys? It's Chris with Everyday Chris, and welcome to my channel. I'm Everyday Chris, where I talk all things Tesla and tech. Make sure you guys subscribe if you're new here for more awesome Tesla tips and tutorials. And as always, hit that like button so more people can find the video. Now, I really wanted to make this video because electric cars are becoming mainstream. We just went to the Electrify Expo in Long Beach. We had a blast. While I was there, I was able to test drive a ton of electric cars like the Kia EV6 GT, the Lexus RZ, as well as the BMW iX. And while I love the cars, the one thing that kept drawing me away from them and back to Tesla was Tesla's supercharging. Because if you didn't know, we love going on road trips with our dogs and having Tesla superchargers everywhere is a game changer. But being reliable, and always working is another huge factor. With gas cars, it's so easy. You can literally find a gas station pretty much on every other freeway exit. It makes sense, so you never really have to worry about where you can fill up gas. However, with electric cars, there aren't as many chargers around, and the ones that you do find, you have to make sure it's working and not in use. This is one of the reasons why so many people take their gas cars on road trips because they just don't want to deal with the hassle. Now, if you're curious to know the differences of cost between a gas car and an electric car, well, you're in luck because I did do a video on that. However, this time with this video, I'm going to try to dot all my T's and cross all my I's. Wait, I'm going to try to cross all my T's and dot all my I's. We're going to be both starting the trip with 100% battery, we're gonna arrive at our destination with 80%. So let's go see what Chris is up to with his two Tesla Model Ys. Take it away, Chris. Today, I'm gonna be taking these two Model Ys on the same exact five hour, 380 mile road trip from Orange County to San Jose. We got Daddy Chill on the left, my Tesla Model Y, and we have our friend's Tesla Model Y on the right. It is six months newer, but it's pretty much the same thing. Now, I don't want you to see this Tesla as a Tesla. I want you to think of it as another electric car like a Kia EV6 or a Mustang Mach-E because I'm not going to be charging with the Tesla superchargers at all with that car. How difficult or how easy is it to charge with those third-party stations? We'll see who gets there first, which one costs more, and how inconvenient it is. So on one corner, we have a white Tesla Model Y long range with aftermarket replica wheels. And on the other corner, we have another white Tesla Model Y long range with the standard Gemini wheels. In terms of weight, we have me, a 195 pound, six foot three Korean boy carrying normal cargo, a 65 pound golden retriever named Queso, and a 12 pound Pomeranian named Obi-Wan Kenobi. And on the other corner, we have the other Model Y carrying precious cargo, Simba, my firstborn, golden retriever, weighing in at a cool 75 pounds, as well as Mr. Peanut Butter, weighing in at 80 whopping pounds. And that is gonna be driven by the old ball and chain, Everyday Jan. 
It is in fact her birthday today while I'm filming this video. Weighing in at a cool 200. What did you just say? <laughs> Come back here. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, we're on? Okay. Uh, sorry for the technical difficulties there. Now, because I'll be the one charging at third party chargers, with someone else's car, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little scared. What if the chargers are broken or don't work and I'm on a low state of charge, I'm pretty much screwed and I really don't wanna tow my friend's car. So it's not really cheating, but I'm gonna try to plan my trips so that there's at least a Tesla supercharger nearby, which is nice because most third party chargers are kind of smart and they realized that Tesla has placed their superchargers in well-known popular locations. Now with EV cars or Teslas at least, you can easily input a destination and it'll plan all the stops for you. That's all good and all, but for me, I really like to charge somewhere with decent bathrooms, food, places to go pee for my boys as well as myself. That's why on my blog, everydaychrisofficial.com, I like to rate Tesla superchargers based off of good bathrooms, Starbucks, uh, safety, and all that fun stuff. So check that website out if you wanna see that. But the one navigation app I use all the time that really helps plan my routes is a better route planner. I have a video where I plan an entire road trip with a better route planner, so check that out. Let's go and get this road trip started. Thanks for Tenways for sponsoring this video. Based in Europe, Tenways has been around for over two years, bringing the green life to an urban world. Made for people who are commuting to work or just wanna go out on morning or evening bike rides, the new Tenways Seago 600 Pros got you covered. For me, since I don't have a bike rack in the Mall X, I was happy to know the Seago 600 Pro fits in the trunk and it's super easy to remove and reinstall the front wheel. I love how it's super lightweight and durable, made with aerospace aluminum, and only weighs about 42 pounds or 18 kilograms, making moving in and out of tight spaces easier. Coming in four sleek matte colors, the Midnight Black with its teal logo is sleek, sexy, and minimalistic. I never liked the bulkiness look of e-bikes, however, with the Seago 600 Pro, that's completely eliminated, and this baby looks good. Built with a carbon belt drive, it avoids any rust, grease, and bike chains, making it super hassle-free. With a built-in OLED display that provides information like the speed, you can set a password on the bike, customize settings, turn on the integrated dual LED floodlight, as well as turn on a cool feature called walking mode, where you can walk with the bike and the motors help move the bike for you on any surface. You can also download the 10 Ways app on your phone and connect it directly to your bike to see stats like battery health, as well as range and how long your trip was. I honestly always hated riding my bike when it's dark due to safety concerns. However, with the included rear light, the front bike light, as well as my Lumos helmet and integrated turn signals, I won't have any problems being seen. With a top speed of 20 miles per hour, it makes climbing up steep hills easy. And with its puncture-proof tires, I can handle the urban streets as well as dirt roads with ease. I also don't need to worry about charging the bike every day as it holds up to 53 miles on a single charge. And if I do charge it, it's easy to remove with the included safety key and charge. And when you're done, that bad boy's waterproof, so simply wash the bike off and you're good to go. If you're interested in not taking your Tesla on a quick trip, try the Tenways Seago 600 Pro instead. I'll make sure you link it in the description below. Good morning, world. It is time for the long-awaited road trip. I mean, every day Jen and I woke up at 2 a.m. this morning, couldn't go back to sleep, and we realized, hey, maybe we could leave earlier. But then I remembered that we have to charge both cars to 100%, and I had it on a scheduled charge. And also, if you guys have Tesla insurance, you can't even drive at that time because it's gonna lower your score, which is gonna increase your premium because I think 2 a.m. is considered unsafe driving or something ridiculous like that. But yeah, it's around 3 a.m. right now. We've got both cars charged to 100%. One thing if you guys don't know, if you are trying to charge your Tesla at a non-Tesla charger, you wanna make sure you navigate to a Tesla supercharger still. That way the battery can precondition and heat up for optimal fast charging. So we're both gonna be navigating to that supercharger. It's gonna take two hours and 21 minutes, 150 miles. So total miles on Daddy Chill is over 50,000 miles. If you didn't see my video, we actually got a reconditioned, refurbished new battery 
because my high voltage battery died. So let's just see what it is at 100%, just to see out of curiosity. Before it was like around 316 on a full charge. Now it's saying my full charge is 297. So now we are in the Model Y. I'm serious, her name of a car is the Model Y. Model Y. She has 13,000, I thought it was 17. It's actually 13,000 miles on it. At 100%, it's giving her 310 miles, so not bad at all. Currently it is 335, and we're gonna be taking off. It even says don't charge to 100% all the time. So we're off now. A lot of times I forget the car is it tinted. So I'm like looking at people staring at them and I realized that these windows aren't even tinted. I'm happy that this has full self-driving beta because right now I'm on full self-driving beta. Looks like we're gonna ride with 35%, which is a little high. Now we just be on this freeway the whole time. Eighty-seven at one area. Tesla superchargers. So this EA Electrify America is actually like a mile in from the five freeway. So it's a little bit out of the way. But I mean, it was like the only one available. So I had to go to this one. There is a Tesla supercharger right there. It's pretty cool. So there's seven of them. Apparently, they're making more too. It's a nice El Taco Bell, a Subway. The Electrify America is right there. Oh my! Look at that one. The maximum power of this charger has been temporarily reduced. Do I need to reverse back in or is it long enough? That's what I want to know. So Electrify America, I'm gonna check the app. Four out of four charges are available. Doesn't say that one of them is not available. Number one ready, so we're gonna plug it in first and then select your charger. So let's go ahead and plug it in real quick. Okay, so it wasn't long enough, so I had to reverse in. I got the CCS adapter over here. We're gonna go ahead and plug it in first, then we're gonna see if we could do the payment method. I mean, this thing is massive compared to this tiny little thing. So we're plugged in. We're gonna see if we can use Apple Pay. There we go. Still initiating, still initiating. Welcome, okay, we'll have to press continue. A few moments later. Still not charging, I hear stuff clicking. There we go, all right. So now we are charging. Let's check the price. We are charging at 48 cents kilo. Wow, that's kind of expensive. There's an e-tron that's just charging. So technically there's only three of them to charge at. So hopefully no one else comes because it's going to be kind of annoying. There's like nine Tesla superchargers and then, uh oh, I think that's a BMW. Oh no, it's not. Okay. But yeah, so we're going to go ahead and see what the charge rate is right now. We're getting 174 kilowatts. It is currently 5.45, we're at 27%, which equals 81 miles. We're gonna go ahead and charge up. So far, I have charged up to 70%. It is enough charge to continue to the next trip, and it's cost $13.76. Just finished the bathroom. I'm so anxious charging at this Electrify America because there's only three chargers, three of them. And the maximum power has been temporarily reduced to perform an update, what? But on the app, it doesn't say that. It says there's all, they're all functioning, working fine. So it looks like the wife is done. Okay, so we're gonna be going here. I'm gonna add that. Let's see how much battery we'll have left. 23%, looks like we're gonna make it. Perfect, so we're done. So far I spent $12, not too bad. Like look how honkador this thing is. This thing is huge. It's so big. I can't do it with one hand. Now we're gonna make our way. It looks like Daddy Chill finished around the exact same time. Looks like Kisa wanted to hang out a little closer so he's on the floor now. I have no idea what's happening to this dog's owner Queso. Uh, I did not bring him up here. I'm not trying to bring him up here. Not gonna give him any attention because I know the owners don't like it when the dogs come up. I said I can't go to our usual rest stop, the Starbucks rest stop. I really wanted to go to that one, but again, the charge point infrastructure is horrible 
Because even their fast speeds charging, max speed is like 65 kilowatts, which is horrible. So I'd be there charging forever. What is up guys? It's Everyday Jan on the Everyday Chris YouTube channel. We have Simba over here. He is my front seat passenger, keeping me company while Everyday Chris is taking the other car. Hi Simba. We are on to our next stop, which is the Harris Ranch Tesla Supercharger. I love that Tesla Supercharger because there are so many, the bathrooms are clean, and there's great food there if you go when it's open. So peanut butter is coming out from hibernating. Good morning, Simba. How was your nap? Simba, how was your nap? Was it good? You wanna say hello to everyone? Hi, Simba. Got to the Harris Fan Supercharger, 716, 24%. Every day, Chris did not give me good directions. It is costing 44 cents per kilowatt hour. Mr. Peanut Butter, did you have a good nap? Front seat. This is Simba's seat. How come you're up here? Got up to 87%. It's costing $20.17. 42 kilowatts here, 258 miles. And it has taken me 27 minutes. Made it to Electrify America. Looks like they have two of them over here. And then there's more on that side. Definitely way more Tesla superchargers though. We're gonna charge up here. It said one was in use on the app, but it looks like they're all free. This thing is huge. Oh. Got my EA card. So I am charging up. Let me check the app real quick. I wanna see how accurate this is. Four out of six chargers available. It says one of them is unavailable, two are in use. So it says that two are in use and one is not available, but there's no one here. See, that's the problem right there, another big issue. Four and six is in use and two is unavailable. Let's go and check, let's investigate what, what's going on. So I'm assuming I'm number four, because it says that one's charging. These ones are totally fine, but one of them is in use apparently. We're gonna check this side. Oh, here we go, charger unavailable. So this one doesn't work. It makes no sense. So that only leaves like eight chargers in this area, which is supposed to be a very popular area. Again, I'm not sure what happens if someone else charges next to me, if it makes it so no one else can charge. Cause apparently on the Google reviews, it says when someone else is charging, it don't, won't let you charge, which kind of makes sense. Because if you look, how is two people gonna charge in one of these? Like look at the spots. It's one parking spot, but there's two chargers here. Technically you only have like, one, two, three, four, five chargers. But yeah, so 718, we're gonna see how long it's gonna take. This is a 350 kilowatt station. So I just checked in with Everyday Jan. Apparently she's at like 50 something percent. I'm at 43% right now. I started my trip at 718. So 10 minutes, not too bad. I need to charge up a little bit longer to make it to Oak Ridge. But I'm gonna go to the bathroom again. I love going to the bathroom. Queso says hello. Queso, say hi. So I knew we'd be at this rest stop the longest because this is the one we want to do right before we go all the way to San Jose. Due to the lack of charging and I didn't want to just go everywhere, I decided just to charge up here longer and then make our final destination to Oak Ridge Mall, which has a Tesla supercharger as well as Electrify America. It wasn't too bad. I mean, I went to go drop off the kids at the pool. So yeah, so overall it doesn't seem like it's that big of a difference in terms of time wise. I think the biggest issue is that anxiety and the convenience factor. No one is here charging right now. Although it says on the app, they're still two in use. Two cars can't charge at the same time. I think they did that because if someone parks closer to one side and the charger on the left or the right side, since the cable is not long enough, you have that option. I went to two stations. The first Electrify America had an issue because one of them wasn't working. Luckily it was a slower 150 kilowatt. That only left three chargers available. And I thought I'd be the only one there at 6 a.m. There was an Audi e-tron there charging. So that only made one spot left. Went to the Electrify America here. This Electrify America in Harris Ranch has been around for a very long time. Very popular destination and spot to charge up, get food, do whatever you have to do. There's only a seven charging docks. However, there's multiple charging plugs. We're almost ready to go. Got Everyday Jen here because she's over there. It looks like everyday Chris has now finished charging. I have been done charging for 10 minutes now. So right now it's not looking too good for him. Way to rub it in, huh? So total cost for this trip was 24.40. Damn! 48 cents per kilowatt hour, 24.48. Let me compare that real quick to Tesla's. Oh, Tesla's is pretty expensive too, 45, 44. 
So both pretty expensive. So it looks like after charging twice, getting to the next charger, which is very close to our destination, will arrive at 10 a.m., which means if we left at 3.30, 10 a.m., six and a half hour drive, when it normally takes about five and a half hours. So overall, uh, it's the same thing as a Tesla supercharger. It's an additional one hour of charging. Every day, Jan does have to wait for me a little bit every time because number one, I'm filming. Number two, I have to set everything up. So that's probably why. Man, the roads suck here. Holy, ooh, in and out burger. I miss it in a burger so much. But I smell the garlic. I arrived here at 9.56. We are at the Blossom Hill Supercharger. Let's go charge. It costs 50 cents, wowzers. Made it to the Electrify America over here. Looks like there's only two chargers, which is insane because I thought there were more online. We're gonna go and check the app real quick, see if we could charge real quick and the rate of charge. There's also Tesla superchargers all the way over there. Uh, but let's see if we could charge over here. Sit, is it gonna sit? It's so clunky. All right, so I pushed it in. Let's go ahead, get the phone ready. Still connecting to vehicle. Oh, come on now. I think it's because of the angle it's at. It's just not like fitting well. Look at that, see, look at that. I might try to reverse in and see if that helps. Might have to try a different plug, I'm not sure. So I tried to plug it in with this cable here and it says unavailable. So I can only use this one, but I don't think it's gonna reach onto this side over here. So I'm screwed. Okay, so we got it. I was able to get it plugged in. We're gonna go ahead and pay for it now and see what kind of rate we get. Look at that, it took me forever. Okay, so already you saw that it was a big hassle to charge at this one. There's only two here. And I tried to find a lot near the area. I couldn't find that many. Already there's a Lucid Air waiting for me and I feel bad because I don't wanna hog the spot. So we're just gonna charge for a little bit. Right now I'm at 23% and I'm only at 84 kilowatts, which is horrible. Now I'm at 124. It took forever though, 125 kilowatts. It'll take me 55 minutes to get to 100%. I think I might have to call it quits early. I guess you just have to kind of figure it out and learn, but there's just not enough availability compared to Tesla. I don't think I'm gonna stay here too long. Like I said before, I don't get so much anxiety. I don't want someone to wait for me because I'm a Tesla, I could charge somewhere else. We're gonna go ahead and stop that. I think the moral of the story is there just needs to be more availability because if I look on my app here, it says there's four charges available. Am I at the wrong one? I'm at Oak Ridge Mall. I'm currently charging. Okay, so it says two out of four chargers are available. Okay, I gotta go. See, there's another Mustang Mach-E charging, trying to charge over there. So I'm gonna go. There should be another one, but it's not there. So that sucks. So I'm gonna go ahead. I'm done here. There's a Mustang Mach-E trying to charge. There's a Lucid Air trying to charge. And I'm not gonna be the guy to uh, just hog a charge as a Tesla. So I'm gonna bounce. I found the other Electrify America. It's right over there. So it makes no sense. Why would they have one over there? And then all the other ones over there. So I'm gonna go to the Tesla supercharger now. If you can see, there's 15 of them. Look at all these Tesla Model Ys, the exact same one. That's so funny. Look at all these Teslas. Holy, it's packed. All right, so sometimes things don't go your way. I knew this might happen where I go to a charging station, but there's people waiting. Like I said, I'm in a Tesla. There's supercharged everywhere. I don't want to be a douchebag hogging up an entire uh, Electrify America station when someone who actually needs to charge has to charge. I think the moral of the story is, as far as speed goes, both are very similar in terms of power output and time it takes to charge. The biggest difference has to be the availability as well as the reliability and it's so true there's only three of them but i don't know for some reason they put two of them close together and one of them they put near the bank so there was actually one free but no one knows where it's at because you have to look for it whereas tesla superchargers they're always here even like the slower ones that are free it's very widely available so it's super easy for anyone to just use it and i think that's the biggest difference and the reason why we got another tesla but anyways guys hope that video helped you thanks so much for watching i'll see you guys next time